Joining us from New York is Shirin Tadro. She's head of Amnesty International there. Thank you very much for joining us. So how would you assess Nikki Haley's record at the United Nations? Well, from a human rights perspective, very much um, mixed and not certainly as glamorous or as wonderful uh, as President Trump would have portrayed right there. I mean, the truth is that when it came to certain issues um, like South Sudan and an arms embargo, or indeed like Myanmar and the situation there and, and bringing to justice Burmese military uh, that were involved in the atrocities, we were very much in line, and other human rights organizations would say the same, in line with what Ambassador Nikki Haley was trying to do. But then her record was extremely mixed and there were other um, uh, conflicts and other situations where human rights was not a priority and here I'm talking about Yemen where um, whereas she, you know we saw her when it came to civilians and children in Syria hold up pictures of babies in the Security Council and urge everyone to do more we never saw the same sort of outrage from Ambassador Haley when it came to children in Yemen that are also being starved and killed and that's of course because the US was shielding and continues to shield their ally Saudi Arabia uh, and of course on the Israel Palestine issue where Nikki Haley continued to defend Israel uh, and talk about a bias at the UN and that's why um, it was important to pull out of the Human Rights Council and so on we saw her use and exercise the US veto when it came to trying to, um, to pull to account the Israelis when uh, they killed various dozens of Palestinians in the protests in, in Gaza so there were certain issues where we certainly but heads um, in terms of the human rights priorities of, of, the, of Ambassador Haley at, at the UN. But overall, in your opinion, was she a good ambassador? I guess it all depends on what you call by a good ambassador, because as it was defined there in, the, in that you know short press conference with, with Nikki Haley and President Trump, they saw a good ambassador as you know representing the U.S. administration's policies and carrying through and carrying them through. Um, and in that way, they do have a point that Nikki Haley did say that she'd pull out of the Human Rights Council if it didn't go her way, and she did. She said that she would defend Israel all the way, and she did. We just differ on whether that is called success and whether that is helpful. Her slashing of the, the budget, the amount of money that the U.S. gives to the U.N., she called that a success. We call it a travesty. We call it, you know, a, a, a situation whereby other states have to step in to try and make up for the shortfall um, of, of the, the lack of U.S. money going into various posts and various very important human rights mechanisms. So it's all about how you judge it. But the, at the end of the day, Nikki Haley really tried to position herself as the human rights voice within the Trump administration a moderate, if you like. And the truth is, when you look at her record, it was anything but. Um, and whenever there was a difference of, of opinion between Ambassador Haley and some of the leading NGOs that work here in, in New York, it was very clear to us that we would, um, that, you know, that difference of opinion would not be tolerated and that we were very much persona non grata when we tried to highlight some of the differences of opinion between U.S. policy and, and what we thought was a moral and, and, and right foreign policy in terms of human rights. So. She certainly wasn't very uh, tolerant uh, of other views. And I think that we really hope as a human rights organization that whoever comes to succeed Nikki Haley will try and repair that relationship with NGOs and engage with us much more in the future. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for that insight there, Shane Tatros.